Income tax 2021-2022, child tax credit and other dependent credit Excel worksheet. Get ready to get refunds to the max, diving into income tax 2021-2022. Lacert tax software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have access to the forms and schedules, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. We're going to primarily be focused on the schedule 8812, credit for qualifying children and other dependents, and that's going to feed into the Form 1040. Let's look at the general scenario on the Form 1040. Single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We've got the one dependent that we're going to start out with. Sam Smith, son, qualifies for the child tax credit. We're going to start with the 60000 of the wages, and then we have the 12550 standard deduction. That gets us to the 47450 taxable income. Let's mirror that over here on our excel worksheet we're going to have w2 income of the 60,000 that's going to flow in here 12,550 that gets us to the 47,450 taxable income which we see here no calculation based on the dependent yet because it's a credit not a deduction we'll be dealing with page two tax calculation starting at the 6,193 6,193 which i'll plug in here six nine 6,193, I believe it was. Is that right? That's correct. And so now we're looking at the credit, which is calculated down here on line 28. That's going to be the refundable child tax credit. It's coming from, of course, Schedule 8812. So let's go back on over to 8812. Now you might just basically rely on the software to do the calculation, but re-putting re it together in Excel could give you kind of that double check and give a better understanding or grasp of what is happening. So we'll put in a more kind of simplified worksheet to get a general idea so the worksheet can do some calculations for us on it, just for just for the fun of it here. So we're going to then go on, on over and say we've got then the credit that we're going to be putting into place. I want to put my new form in place here. Actually, I already have one. This is the form 8812 child tax credit and other uh, dependent credit. So I'm just going to add a little bit of room here so that I can I have some place to work. I'm going to I'm going to delete the totals. I'm going to put new totals if I need it. I'm going to add some room under the child tax credit. Let's make it a little bit larger. And I'm just going to add a whole bunch of cells in here. So I got a lot of space and I'm just going to insert and I'm going to do this fairly quickly just to get a general idea of what is going on. So, so if I go back on over to my worksheet then, and I'm going to go to line 12, we've got then the, the basically the amount pulling in from our AGI here on line number one. So that's 60,000 is pulling in from the 1040 down here with the adjusted gross income, the 60,000. And so that's where this number is coming from. And then we've got up top number of qualifying children under age 18 and then we got the number of children including in 4a who were under six because remember, remember we have that two-tier threshold of children under 18 but under six is a higher amount of the credit than the other and then we've got the main worksheet here so this is the main worksheet that we can be drawing from so it says here, we're going to say number one, multiply the 8812 line 4B by 3,600, 4B being the children that are under six, multiply times the greater amount, and then multiply schedule 8812 line 4C by 3,000. Those are the children that are six to 18. So if I was to mirror that here, I could say, okay, so I'm going to say, let's say we've got number of children, uh, qualifying children let's say qc for qualifying children under age six and then we're going to multiply that times the amount per child which is going to be 3600 and then i'm going to put another one this is going to be number of qualifying children uh age uh over let's say over six to 18 and that's going to be the number there that I'll put. And then I'll say the amount per child is going to be 3000 there. Now let's, let's change our scenario a bit so that we have one of each of those. I've got one child that's under six. Let's add another one that is between six and 18. So I'm going to say, let's, let's add another child 
that's between 6 and 18 here. So that's, I think that will do it. And so now if I go to the form 1040, you've got two children, both qualifying for the child tax credit, but for two different tiers of it, because one's under six and one's between six and 18. So actually, no, they both qualifying for the one. So one needs to be older. We need an older one. We gotta have an older one so we could one can babysit the other one while we go. Okay, so the one's older. So now we've got the two, and so now we've got these two different children that are included here that are uh, of qualifying for the two different kinds of calculations. So if I mirror that on over here, I could say okay. So now I can put my data input field. Now these ones, I'm gonna make the data input fields blue and everything else. So let's let's actually make this whole thing non-blue first and then i'll try to add the blue only to the data input fields that we're going to put data in so i'm going to put data in to this field i'm going to make that blue and data into this field so i'm going to say one here and i got one here i'm going to put the total in the outer column so i'm going to multiply this out one times three thousand six hundred this is going to equal one times the three thousand so there's our our full amount so this would be the child tax credit child tax credit if nothing else was going on let's say before phase outs so you would think that would be basically what we would have before phase outs and let's say and prepayments prepay prepayments so we got phase out prepayments that we're going to basically have uh have to deal with then well let's just say let's keep the prepayments out of it at this point we're just going to say before the phase outs for now. And we'll put that in the outer column equals the sum of these two. So that's what it would be. So now we've got a bunch of other stuff that's gonna go on and let's put an underline here. Let's put an underline here and let's put an underline here. So now we're gonna have stuff that goes on related to basically a phase out based on the AGI level. So now we've got the add these together. There's the 6,600 and then we're gonna multiply schedule 88 one two uh, line four a by two thousand and you can see four a right here is has the number of children so we're going to take the number of children times two thousand in essence so i'll put that here we're going to say qualifying children i'm going to have to add these two boxes together equals i'm going to say brackets this box plus this box closing the brackets times two thousand so there's our four thousand that we have in our example here and then we subtract line four from three to get to the 2,600. So I'll do that here. I'm gonna say this is gonna be this minus this to get to 2,600. I'll put an underline here to see that. So there we have that subtotal. And then if I go back on over, now we've got these amounts per the filing status. So, so we could use a tricky or fancy Excel worksheet to kind of pull over and match out the filing status but I'm just gonna put these amounts in there. Married filing joint, 12,005. Qualified widow, 2,005. Head of household, 4,375. All others, uh, 2,650. So I'm just gonna list those out here and say, okay, I'm gonna say married filing joint, qualified widow, we've got head of household, and we've got all others. I'm gonna indent those, selecting these items and indenting them a bit. And then I'm going to put the amounts they gave us, which was 12.5. Hopefully I get these right. 2.5, and the 6.250. And then I'm going to pick the one that applies. We have a single filer for us. So I'm going to be picking then this one. I'm going to make these blue because I want to, I want to, you know, let's, let's actually make just one of them. I won't try to pick each one of them. I'll always put whichever one applies into this cell so i'll make that one blue so so that one's going to be this one in that case if it was married filing joint then i would say that's this one right so we don't have multiple different cells that will mess up other formulas and then what are we going to do it says we're going to enter the smaller we're going to enter the smaller uh into the smaller of five and six okay so i'm going to say here smaller of small smaller smaller of I have to use a logic function between these two to do that I'll use an if function equals if brackets if this cell is less than 
this cell, then, that's when you hit a comma, then what I want you to do is pick up that cell if it's smaller. But if it's not smaller, comma, that's what the comma means, then I want you to pick up that cell, close the brackets, there it is. So now if this one was smaller, like two, it would pick up that cell. So we've got our if then logical function happening. So then it's, it says enter the amount shown below for your filing status. These are kind of like the thresholds or phase outs that you can look at. Now I'd like to see what my AGI is. So I'm actually going to add my AGI in my worksheet right here. The AGI, adjusted gross income. And I'm going to pick that up from the first page of the form 1040 1040 first page here's the agi 60,000 where we are at this time i'm going to have these amounts from the table again amounts per filing status and so these are basically the phase out amounts that we have here married filing joint qualified widow widower 150,000 head of household the 12 uh, 112,500 all others 75,000 so i'm going to go on over now we're filing single right now, so our phase out would be 75. We're at 60, so we shouldn't have those phase outs. I'm gonna use the same, the same uh, filing statuses we had up top. I'm gonna indent them, and then I'm gonna put those amounts in here, 150, married filing joint, same for qualified widow, widower, 112,500, head of household, and 75,000 here. And I'm just going to pick the one that applies, which is the single filer making that blue. So we're going to have to pick that one out. We could use a fancy formula to let Excel do that for us, but I'm going to pick the filing status and have to do the data input, which is a little less fancy, but it, you know, it is what it is. Okay. So that's, so then, then what do we do? We're going to, we're going to say, then after that, we're going to, we're going to say that enter the amount shown below subtract line eight. Uh, from schedule 8812 from line three, if zero or less, enter zero. If more than zero and not multiple, not a multiple of 1,000, enter the next multiple of 1,000. And I think that means we're basically rounding up, I believe, to multiples of 1,000. So let's say that we're going to, we're going to say that this is a, a subtract, 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 uh, not below zero, zero round up 1000 to the nearest thousand is what I'm trying to say with all of that garbage that I just put right there. So, so what I'm going to say, we can, we could first say we're going to take the, the lesser of these items, or we're going to subtract these items. And if it goes below zero, we're going to enter zero. Obviously this one's going below zero. So first I can say, with an if logic function, I can say, well, equals if. So we're going to say here equals if brackets. And then I'm going to put another pair of brackets. We're going to put the argument in this cell minus this cell. And then I'm going to close up that argument. If that minus that is less than zero, then that's when I put a comma. Then I want you to put zero there. But if it's not comma, that's the other comma. Then I want you to do the subtraction, which I, let's put brackets around it again, which is this minus this, closing the brackets and then closing the whole bracket thing again, and it puts a zero there. Now let's make it a little bit more interesting and make this a hundred thousand by going to the by going to my income. Let's say W two income was a hundred thousand. Now we're over the phase out that flows into the income here, and that would then flow into my worksheet here. So now. We have a positive 25,000. Let's match that in our Excel worksheet just to check it out and say W2 income now is at 100,000. To test this out, forms, let's go to here. We're going to say, okay, so now we're at the 100,000 and we're going to go into here. So now we're at the 25,000. Just to make it a little bit more tricky uh, because we, we wanted to round it now. To the nearest thousand so this one's too too nice and rounded let's say we went back on over here and said it was a 100 100 uh four 100, 400. what's it going to do with that going back on over and go into my forms and take a look at it again so now uh it rounded it even though it was 400 up it rounded it up to twenty six thousand. so now i'm going over here and saying oh man what am i going to do what if this was what if this was 104 and I pull that over 
And so now I pull that over. So now I want to round it up. It needs to round up to 26,000. So I got to round this up now. How am I going to do that? How in the world? Let's go back. Let's double click on this. This last argument. I've got to say, I, just, I don't want you just to subtract it. I want you to round it up to the closest thousands. So I'm going to add in here a round up formula. Round up. Round up. Round them up. And then I'm going to say, there it is. And then I'm in, I'm going to go to the end of this and say comma. So now it says number of digits and negative three represents the thousands digits. So negative three, and then it's going to close it up. I need another bracket. Okay. Add the bracket. So there it is. It rounded it up to 26,000. So there we have a bit of a fancy formula. So let's go back on over. And then it says, after we do that fanciness, it says multiply line nine by 5%. So I'm gonna say times 5% times the rate, let's say of 0.05. This is gonna be part of the phase out calculation. Let's make that a percent. And then I'm gonna say this is this is gonna be, I'll just call it a sub total, sub tote, which is gonna be equal to this, uh, this amount of the 26 times the 5%, okay. So let's see what else we've got there. So there's the 1003, enter the smaller of line seven or 10. So seven or 10. So I think that is between this number and this number. So I'm gonna take the smaller of those two. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's put that over here. Smaller of, let's, and this will basically be the phase out, phase out. Then it's gonna be the smaller of these two numbers. So I'm going to say equals if, there's another if thing, equals if brackets, if this number is smaller than, than this number, then that's when we do a comma, I want you to take the small, this one, if it's smaller. If not, comma, that's what that means when you say if it's not, then I want you to take this one. So it's going to take the smaller of that 1,300. And so that's going to give us then a subtotal here. We've got the subtotal subtotal or this will basically be the the child tax credit credit which is going to be equal to this number up here before the phase out minus the phase out so there we got the 5300 so their bottom line there's our 5300 so we basically kind of recreated this calculation and then we got to take into consideration now number six, which is basically the other dependents that, that come into play here. So let's say we had another dependent. Let's add another one. So now we've got this other person here. We're going to go to page one. We've got Sam, Jane, children, one under six, one over six, but below 18. And then T. Smith, which is an other dependent, which doesn't qualify for the child tax credit, but for the other credit. Okay, let's go back on over. And now let's say now we've got the other credit, which we have a one here, and we're gonna multiply that times the rate, which is gonna be 500. So I'm gonna go back on over and say, okay, so now we've got, we've got then the other dependent credit, number of, P, of dependents, let's say one, and let's, let's get rid of this whole blue thing for now, removing the blue, removing the blue, for now so we've got one there and then we're going to multiply that amount per dependent which is 500 500 per dependent and so then i'm going to put that let's put that on the outside here so it's lining up with this this column this equals this times this so this is going to be total other dependent credit before phase outs or anything out anything like that and so then we're going to go back on over so now we've got that 500 and so now we're going to add those together so that's going to be the 5800 so this is going to be then i'm going to say okay this is the total ch child tax credit and other dependent credit before phase outs summing up let's put this in the outer column here equals the sum of all this stuff so now we're at the 5800 and then we could possibly have some phase out stuff here where it says the 
incomes a little bit high, enter the amount below for filing status, married, filing joint, all others. So 400 or 200,000. So, okay, so we got, we're gonna say then we've got per filing status and we've got married, filing joint and all others. I'm gonna indent these two, a little indentation. And this is gonna be 400,000 and 200,000. And we're gonna pick, we're gonna pick one of those. So for us, we have the 200,000. So I'm gonna pick up the 200,000. I'm gonna make this blue because we're gonna to have to kind of figure out which one we should pick there between those two. And then it says subtract line nine from three if zero or less enter zero if more uh, and not a not a multiple of 1000 enter the next multiple of 1000 for example so we got the same kind of issue obviously it's zero here because that's a fairly high threshold for a single filer but let's go above it just so we can just so we can see that that we could say okay well what if my income was above 200,000 like it was like two one Oh, and then let's say oh three hundred. So wait a second, that's too high. Two oh oh three hundred. So now it's a it's a thousand. It's gonna round it up to a thousand over that, I believe. So I'm gonna say okay, let's see what that does. So now we're gonna say see now it rounded. We're over the two hundred thousand by just three hundred dollars, and it rounded it up to a thousand. So, okay, so now we've got that weirdness happening again. So let's let's mirror that over here. Let's say that we went over here and said that our income was 203. And that pulls into page one. And that's going to pull in over here. So now we're, we've got to say that we got to subtract these two out, which is going to be my income, which is the 300,000 uh, minus this but round it to the to the thousands so it's going to be and if it's less than that it's going to be zero so i'm going to say okay here it is it's going to be if brackets and i'm going to say if this number up top my 203 agi minus this and is less than and i got to put brackets around this argument because it's a addition and subtraction if that's less than zero then comma i want you to put a zero there but if it's not comma then i want you to do the argument of brackets this minus this that's what we'll start off with so there it is there's the 300 so there's the 300 and so if this was something less than 100,000, it would put zero there okay so now i've got to add i've got to make it okay now it's 300 i need to round it up to the next multiple of a thousand. So I'm gonna go back into here and add my rounding up to a thousand before this last argument. Round up brackets. And so this minus this, and then comma to the number of digits, which is negative three for, for, uh, for thousands. So negative three and enter. It's gonna close up the brackets. I need one more. So there is our thousand there, okay. And then it says multiply line 10 by 5%. So I go back on over and say, let's multiply it times 5% times the rate of 5%, 0.05, making that a percent, making that a percent. And so that's gonna give us our subtotal of another. So this is a subtotal, or this is gonna be a phase out, let's call it. I'm gonna put that in into, should I put that into an outer column? This is gonna be a phase out. This is, this is the, well, let's put in the outer column. This is gonna be this times this, the $50 phase out. And this was the credit before the phase out. Let's actually pull this whole thing. I'm gonna pull this whole thing over. So there we have it. So this is where we were before the phase out. Then we have the phase out, which finally gets us to line 12, which is, which is subtract line. This is going to be the credit. So this is gonna be the credit amount, credit. This is gonna be CTC and OCD, other DDC, credit, credit, 
So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to, let's put it in the outer column, this minus this. So there we have that. But then we also had the prepayments that we put into place. So if I go down here and say, okay, uh, but we're going to check line 13 and say, but then we made, we got prepayments from that. All right. So, and then it actually gets a little bit messy down here as well. But I'm, I'm not going to go into the, a lot of the detail on this because we're getting kind of short on time. So I'm going to say, okay, this is the amount that we got on the prepayment, which we're going to say is the 1,800 from the letters 6419. So I'm going to say, okay, these are, this is the advanced advanced child tax credit payments that we got, which I said was was 1800. So 1800, 1800. So that's going to give us the the uh, CTC and ODC available available for available at this point let's say that this is going to be equal to the 4450 uh, minus the 1800 let's do that one more time something went wrong horribly horribly wrong and that's going to be the 2650 the 2650 and then I'm just going to break them out between the two credits which is going to be the o ODC, which I'm going to say is still equal to, and this is of course a simplification, is still equal to that 500. So the CTC is going to be the difference between the two, this minus this. And it's important to break those out because this one up top is like a refundable, is going to be non-refundable usually, typically. And then this one down here is the refundable. So if I go back on over to my first page here, we've got the, the credits. These are going to be the non-refundable where I'm going to put the ODC. This is going to be equal to scrolling over this portion, the 500. And then down here, I'm going to put the refundable portion which is going to be here and I'm going to pick up this refundable plus the payments that we're going to have down here if there were any and that's going to give us the 2150 which kind of mirrors what you can see here and I'm going to go to the 8812 and so now we've got the totals down here that are being broken out the 5000 the 2150 pulling into the 1040 page number two here's the 500 for the non-refundable up top and then here's the 2150 so if i kind of recalculate this or look at it we've got then page one the three dependents two children one under six one between six and 18 other dependent we had the 200,300 we've got the 12,550 standard deduction there's the 87 uh 187,750 so I'm going to go back on over and say, okay, so there's this 187,750. The tax then calculated on page number two, 40,907. So I'm going to say, all right, there's the 40907. And then we've got this credit of the 500. So, the, so that mirrors here, the 500, that gets us to then the 40,407. So now we've got the 40,407. And then we put the the other credit credit we also have this other forms where this is a, a medicare thing because of the w-2 wages but then we've got the 2150 the 2150 getting us to the the 38994 we also have a penalty of the 987 so we've got the 987 penalty 987 so that would get us to the 38944 the 38944, this penalty was 687, 687, 38944. So somewhere, so there's the basic calculation. Let's go back on over. I'll try to clean it up a little bit. So just to see the data input, we have the data input here, data input here, no more data input. We've got data input here. And then we got to put a data input here. And then the other items we got to put a data input point here and then the 500,000 and then we got to put a data input point there and i think that's basically it so it's not a perfect worksheet and there are exceptions we'll talk about possibly in a future presentation but doing a worksheet like this can give you kind of an idea 
of the phase outs and whatnot uh, that you could see. And, and if you wanted to put a worksheet in to kind of get the general idea of what's happening with the return for a double check, they can be it can be kind of useful to do as well. So there is that. Let's spell check it. Let's check the spelling. I'm sure there's got to be spelling errors. No, whatever. Spell check must be broken. Any case.